He won't come in. He prefers to sit outside in the car and listen to the radio. Confirmed. That vehicle's registered as a white BMW. Over. Thank you, Cathy. Could you give Stamp and Quinnan a call, please, Cathy? Tell them I'd like to see them. Do you want to see them now, sir? No, I've got to go out again. Uh, better make it after the refs. 1800 will be fine. Sir. Mr. Cook? Yes. My name's PC Ackland. I've just been inside talking to your wife. Don't you think she might need a bit of support, Mr. Cook? She's obviously very upset. She's sustained some quite nasty injuries. Do you know how she came by them? Maybe she fell. I don't know. I just drive the car. It seems to me, Mr. Cook, that her injuries are consistent with someone who's been assaulted. Tell you that, did she? Well, no, she didn't. No. I thought not. So you don't know anything about it? That's right. I was listening to the radio, so uh, if that's all. You should have clocked his documents, June. Never know, might have forgotten to renew his insurance. Oh, that's not the point, is it? She's in and out of casualty all the time. Cuts, bruises, all the usual things. And he gets away with it. Probably too scared to say anything. You want to go round there, give him a fright. Set the neck curtains flapping. You fit? You're keen. Mum Rowe wants to bend our ears. Do you know, it's funny, I saw Mum at the hospital today. He was tarting himself up. Probably having a fling with a sister. Well, you never know. <laughs> Who's having a fling? Munro. It's all taken care of. I'll try and pop out and see you later. OK, bye. Come in. Yes, gentlemen. You wanted to see us, sir. Come in. Oh, sorry, Andrew. I just thought I'd catch you before you went to the business watch meeting. I'll come in, sir. This will only take a minute. Right then, gentlemen. Anyone have anything to say on the subject of carrying unauthorised passengers? You know what I'm talking about, Stamp? It's against regulations, sir. Couldn't it? Well, like Tony says, sir. When I was in Priory Vale today, I saw you giving a lift to a gentleman with some bags of shopping. A gentleman who, as far as I could see, had absolutely no connection with police business whatsoever. Well? Yeah, it was my fault, sir. It's a bloke we know who's been quite useful in the past, supplying us with the odd tidbit. I just happened to spot him and suggested we give him a lift. And I just happened to spot you, Quinnan. So, while a call for a reported break-in at Ellington Way went unanswered, you two decided you'd play Good Samaritans and supply your friend with a minicab. Oh, no, it's no excuse, sir. But we have been to the shop in Ellington Way before. He's got a dodgy alarm bell. He goes off for three-hour dinner breaks, and no one can find him. He's just a pain in the bum. Yes, I'm quite aware of that, Stamp. But that does not give you the right, A, not to answer calls, and B, to carry unauthorised passengers. Do I make myself clear, gentlemen? Sir. Sir. That's the dog and gun. Ten to fifteen wedding guests in a brawl. It's all yours. Received. You are right, Jim? Well, domestic. Honiton Crescent. That's uh, Ron Smollett's home beat, isn't it? Yeah, but I doubt you'll drag him out now. He's due to knock off at six. No chance he's got a plan, though. Could be your lucky day. He blagged the spare. Brilliant. 330 from Sierra Oscar. 330, go ahead. Hello, Ron. Ron, it's June here. Look, I know you're about to knock off, but do you think you could do me a favour? Can you come round to Honiton Crescent with me, possible domestic? Affirmative, June. I was supposed to be going out this evening, but, well, never mind. Now, I'll pick you up as soon as I can. You're a star, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Mrs. Cook, yeah. we met earlier at the hospital. Yeah. Uh, this is my colleague, PC Smollett. He's the home beat officer for this area. Look, I don't want to be rude. But I just got in from work. Look, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Mrs. Cook, we only want... Mrs. Cook! Mrs. Cook! I'm so glad. Oh, that's all right. Young nephew's birthday. That's how I'll still make it. At least this is going on here. Mrs. Cook! Mrs. Mrs. Cook! If you mean Mark, yes. It's for the best. My bolt hole. My refuge. Were you in here all the time? I think you'd better come back in the house, Mr. Cook. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mrs. Cook. He'll be charged and held in custody, awaiting an assessment by a psychiatric doctor and an approved social worker. What are you charging him with? He'll be charged with breach of the peace. He smashed your house up. It's my house. But he could have smashed you up. That's a risk I live with. Would you like to take Mrs. Cook through to the waiting room, please, yeah, Jim? please, let me go to him. I don't want him banging his head on the cell wall. I'll pretend I didn't hear that, Mrs. Cook. I mean it. He sees a wall, it's like a magnet to him. I'll make a note of it. Let me go and see him. Look, why don't you go around to the front with PC Ackland and wait in the waiting room? Why can't I go in there? Because the general public use the front entrance. I'm not general or public. I'm private and specific. I know a bloke who could do your windows on the cheap. Your frames will need doing. Why did he do it? I don't know. I don't know. But he must have done something before. I mean, what's all this? That was the last time we ever spoke. Over a year ago. He tried to strangle me. So I need him in the groin. And then he came up here and tried to burn the place to the ground. Luckily, the wife was in the bath, so we got some buckets and doused it. There must be something you can do. You can't go on living like this. Walk out, you mean? Oh, no. Social services or somebody, there must be something they can do. I pay the mortgage and the housekeeping. 
and I wash my hands of it. I told her his best chance would be to push him out. Push him onto the state, let them take care of it. We can't. But when it's your only child... In the end, I couldn't do it. I didn't know what to do. So I do nothing. business watch. It'll be a piece of cake. We deserve it. Wrapping our knuckles like that in front of the chief inspector. When was the last time you saw him using the duty officer's car for personal use then, eh? Go on in. But don't forget, I'm not the one who's running off to Corfu to escape the flat. You got bottle, Tony. Now, Mark, I want you to sign here and here, right? It's just to say you've been advised of your rights. Look, it's just to confirm what Sergeant Peters has already told you. It's nothing bad, Mark. You want to take my legs, don't you? You don't want to see this. You try to come and make me sign so I can go in your spaceship. You try to trick me, I know you. No, Mark, I haven't, honestly, Mark. Come on, you prat. Some of us want shut to see it. You right off. Shut up. Look, would you like to go and lie down, Mark? Be on your own for a bit, eh? June, do you mind? Sarge! You gonna sign or not? Right. Refuse to sign. Put him in number three, Hollis. Sarge, this is the last thing he needs! June, if social services decide not to commit him to psychiatric, it's down to the magistrates. Let them get involved. Just in case he decides to make a habit of losing his rag. He's not losing his rag, Sarge. He's losing his mind. See how far he gets now, then. Obviously, not as far as he'd like. What? Never, not in his car. Only a bouquet. Love is in the air, Tone. Old Andy's found himself a bit on the side. Oh, come on, darling, not in here. Back you go. It's a police station. Look, mate, I ain't giving you my name. What's all that noise? I'm sorry. It looks like somebody got divorced before they got married. Hopefully... He won't stand all those people yelling. No, he's all right, Mrs Cook. He's on his own. He's very quiet. Please, couldn't you let me see him? No. Just for a minute. No, I'm sorry. I can't. It's the rules. We can't put you at risk. No. But why don't you sit down? How long has he had this problem with road sweepers? Depends on how he feels. Anything with flashing lights, rumbling noises, all that with uniforms he thought you'd come to take him over. Must be a nightmare for you. You have to have your wits about you. He used to fly at those bin men twice a week. We sit in the kitchen now, curtains closed, and listen to some of my old tapes. Likes the ballads. Frank Sinatra and all that lot, we get by. Yeah, I'm sure you cope very well, Mrs Cook, but... But what about getting proper treatment? I mean, how long has this been going on? What about treatment? You tell me. Six years it's been going on, ever since they chucked him out of university. That surprises you, doesn't it? He would have been a doctor by now. He started telling his fiance his dad had nicked his books. A couple of months later, she dumped him on the doorstep. He kept locking himself in his room, one night. From then on, it was in and out of psychiatric hospital till a couple of years ago. And what happened? Some bright spark sent him home, flattened the hospital, and turned it into a DIY warehouse.
Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar One. Sierra Oscar One, go ahead. I'd like you to circulate a lot of stolen vehicles, please, Kathy. Go ahead, sir. Index number Juliet 649 Tango Bravo Lima, Blue Sierra, taken from Ellington Way Car Park sometime in the past one and a half hours. Steve, shall I organise a lift for you, sir? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's well gutted. Yeah. I bet his bird ain't too happy. Be long later to see him. <laughs> Ignore them. <laughs> Look, it's um. She's dramatically changing. <laughs> 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 security here. In future, make sure that all visitors are properly supervised, all right? Sarge! Oh, Mrs. Cook, please, can you come out with me? All right, one of our officers is staying with him. And you thought you were going to escape across the mid? Yeah. We'll have a bit of a rant. We'll just deny everything. Can you help me, please, miss? Uh, yes, sir. It's, uh, it's Eileen, uh, my wife, and my son, Mark. They came here hours ago, and uh, I've waited and waited, but they didn't come home. I've brought Mark some clothes. In a hurry, Quinnan. Oh, yes, sir, I'm going away. On your holidays? I'm quite aware. Well, you know why you're here. So, as we're all in a hurry to get away, and... Uh... You're about to deny everything. Shall we cut the flannel? Sir? <laughs> Where do you think I got this from, Quinnan? A fancy dress shop? I gave your ego a tap, so you both thought you'd uh, stitch me up and have a bit of fun at my expense. I won't even bother to ask you if you did it, because we know that. Of course, the whole station knows that. That was the idea. And they'll all know about the flowers and uh, my secret romance. <laughs> Laughable, isn't it? Pity I didn't have the opportunity to drop them into the hospital. My wife's having an operation tomorrow. Well, that's all. Have a nice holiday, Quinnan. Thank you, sir. brown eyes, extraordinary yeah. big brown eyes, piercing brown eyes, mm. and this big, big brown beard, very, very yeah. full brown beard, yeah. and this cloak, this white cloak, mm -hmm. I swear, I swear, hey, hey. it was... Hey, 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 <laughs> thanks very much for talking to us, Mark. He, um... But we yeah. have got to have a chat, so uh, maybe you'd like to go and have a rest. Okay. 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 Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Mm. Come on, Mark. Thanks a lot. Thanks. 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 He's been diagnosed as chronic schizophrenic in the past. According to his mother, yeah. And he obviously believes that someone is out to harm him. Has he been while he's been in custody? Any problems? Well, uh, he got a bit scared when the custody officer gave him a sandwich, but no, there's been no real problem. He just seems more frightened and isolated than anything else. Well, well, I would say that uh, under the circumstances, there's very little that can be done for him that isn't already being done. But nothing is being done, well, is that's it? that's not true. He has undergone treatment. Well, can't you 
have him sectioned under the Mental Health Act. I mean, have him taken into care. Your custody officer could have him sectioned. That's not the problem. The problem is what to do with him. Well, you have him committed to a psychiatric ward. I mean, <laughs> no, it's surely... out of the question. While he's not actually presenting a risk to himself or anyone else, we certainly couldn't take away his liberty. I mean, he does have rights, after all. Doesn't his mother have any rights? Look, she has been injured by him. She's not going to testify to that in court, but it unquestionably goes on. Well, that is a legal question. PC Ackley, I can tell you he's a damn sight better off than most. <laughs> Dr. Martin and myself and many other people spent half our lives on the telephone desperately trying to find psychiatric hospital places for people with nowhere to go and no one to look after them. At least Mark has that. Hospital just isn't feasible. I think uh, that Roger and I both agree that for the moment, his case should be monitored. And is that it? I really can't see any other course of action. Look, I'm probably no happier about this than you are, but it's the best the system can provide, believe me. It's a bit personality, it's what people think, you know. It's what, it's what people think. Anyway, Dad Shreep has schizophrenia, he went when I'm working for years. I can't think I've come across him. Is he ever called, Judd? No, he's, um... He's one of, um, one of Freud's case histories. It's quite interesting, if you, get, if you get a chance to, um, to have a look at it. Yeah, well, I might do that. I've always been aware of what a strange thing a human mind is. I don't understand. You said... I he... said he'd be given an assessment. But he needs to go to hospital. What assessment does he need? You've seen him. A doctor and a social worker have both agreed... But you've seen what he's like. He hears voices. He's meeting Jesus Christ in the shopping arcade. What are they going to do with him in the court, eh? Send him to prison? No, no, he'll be bound over to keep the peace. And sent back home for me to look after. How am I supposed to cope with Mrs. him? Mrs Cook, please calm down. No! When he's out of control, he needs drugs. Drugs I don't have. Drugs the hospital has. Why can't he go there? Just for a while. Why? I don't know. I guess it's just not that simple. Oh, isn't it? What's so complicated about it? What is it that you people can't see with your own eyes? All I know is what the social worker told me. And he thinks... Oh, does he? He slashed his legs with a razor blade. He washed his face with bleach. Have you ever seen what that does? No. Blood in his eyes. And he'll do it again and again and again and again. And then he'll probably be dead! So I'll have to stay here all night then, will I? Hmm? You'll keep me here. That's right. <laughs> 